Hello everyone, welcome to the introductory video for the Ordinary Differential Equations section of our website to help you out with this topic. Um, and so this video is not going to be a lot of uh, doing lots of mathy stuff. It's just going to be mostly looking at definitions and terminologies and procedures that we might see throughout the course. So we'll just start out today. We want to know that a differential equation is just basically an equation that gives us information about derivatives of one or possibly more functions. And I've listed several here. You notice some of them use the prime notation, some of them use a dy dx notation. Sometimes, like in this first example here, we'll actually have an explicit expression for the derivative of something, which we're calling y, in terms of the independent variable, which we're calling x here. Uh, sometimes we may have an implicit expression, where the derivative of some function is actually in terms of itself. Um, we may have, as we have <clears throat> both here and here, uh, some what we would call higher order derivatives. This y double prime means that we have the second derivative of y. And then down here you can see this d cubed y over dx cubed means we have the third derivative of y. So sometimes we'll have different types of derivatives, obviously. Over here you can see in this last example we actually have what are known as the partial derivatives. We have partial derivative of z with respect to x and partial derivative of z with respect to y. Um, dealing with some sort of likely partial differential equation there. And so the difference between those two ordinary differential equations, what we're focusing on here, is just going to deal with ordinary, what we think of as regular derivatives with respect to only one variable, where the partial differential equations have partial derivatives and usually with respect to multiple variables. So we'll be dealing with the ordinary differential equations here. Here looking at the order which is just basically the highest order derivative present in the equation. We'll be classifying differential equations as first order, second order, fourth order, etc., etc. So if you look at the first one here, we have y prime plus 2y equals sine x. That is a differential equation because we have y prime in it. And since it's just y double prime, that is order one. So we have a first order differential equation there. For the next one, y double prime minus 4ty prime equals e to the t. Now we have both y double prime and y prime, but in this one it's the highest order of derivative present, so the order for this is 2. This would be considered a second order differential equation. Next one, really kind of similar to the second one, except we have x double prime plus 2x prime plus x equals t plus 1. So again, our derivatives are now of x, you can see the other variable is t, so likely we're actually talking about derivative with respect to t of x there. Again, the second derivative being the highest order there, so that's a second order differential equation. And for the last one, the y triple prime minus 6y double prime plus 9y prime, our highest order derivative is order 3 there, so that would be a third order differential equation. So when we talk about the order, that's what we mean in this course. When we talk about finding the solution, because a lot of times we're going to have this information, here's a differential equation, something behaves like this, and we want to find the solution. In other words, what's an equation that gives us uh, basically the model of, of what is really going on? And so if we have some differential equation order n, when we say find the solution, we're finding basically the function, the expression, that satisfies that equation on some interval, and we're usually going to call the interval i. Okay, so if I have some y equals expression that's my solution and it's on some interval i, we just want to make a note that the function must have at least its first n derivatives continuous on the interval i. So let's say your interval is negative 1 to 1, that's your interval that you have a solution on, um, and you had a, a fourth order differential equation, meaning the order n equals 4, then you need to be able to take four derivatives of your function, that's your solution, and they need to be continuous on that interval. And we'll also be looking at different types of solutions. We'll be looking at general solutions and particular solutions. Um, so general solutions and particular solutions, you may have seen some of this in calculus already, but the idea is when we're looking at something that has a specific derivative, there may be many functions. So for example, if we had looked at in calculus, well, we have an expression that says dy dx equals 2x. So in other words, we're looking for some function y 
that gives us a derivative of 2x. And actually there are many of them. If we think about integrating this, maybe on both sides or taking the antiderivative, actually any function of the form y equals x squared plus a constant will give us a derivative of 2x because when we obviously take the derivative of that constant, that becomes zero. And so we're left with anything of the form x squared plus a constant being 2x. So I've graphed several of these. You can see these parabolic shapes of equations. Basically, any of those have a derivative of 2x. So if we're looking for a general solution, in other words, the family of solutions that might fit having derivative 2x, then we'll be looking at what we call a general solution. If we're actually interested in a particular one of those curves, say we want a function that has a derivative of 2x, but we also want it to satisfy going through some point. So for example, here we're given what's called an initial condition here. This y of 0 equal to negative 1 is what we call an initial condition. In other words, we want the specific curve that when x is equal to 0, then that gives us that y is equal to negative 1. So we want basically the curve that goes through 0 comma negative 1, not just any of these curves over here we could have chosen from on the general solution side. So what we'll do is then obviously we'll solve and we'll say, well, it's y equals x squared plus a constant, and then by plugging in these values 0 and negative 1, we'll be able to figure out, you know, okay, which parabolic curve is it? And if we do that, we actually get that it is the equation y equals x squared minus 1 when we plug in that information. So that's the difference between general solutions and particular solutions. We'll be looking at both. And then finally, just a note about notation. Uh, we have three common types of notation that I'm going to use in this course. We may see one or two other things just very, very rarely, but these are going to be the three most common ones that you'll see. The Leibniz notation will be uh, the biggest deal for us because we're looking at the differential uh, sort of as a ratio and we may actually be splitting up the differential uh, in lots of different cases. So we'll be using the Leibniz notation most often. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with Lagrange's prime notation where we have y prime being the first derivative, y double prime being the second derivative, etc. Remember that after we get past y triple prime and we have a fourth derivative or higher, then we actually use parentheses so that is not y to the fourth, for example. That is actually the fourth derivative, or the fourth prime of y, so to speak. And the last notation we'll use, we'll use this a little bit less, but Newton's dot notation. Basically, when we see y dot, we will think of that as always the dot notation is derivative with respect to t. So if we see a single dot, that means y dot is dy dt. y double dot would be the second derivative of y with respect to t. And similarly for x dot and x double dot, we would have the derivative with respect to t when we see the dot notation there. Okay, so that's just an intro to some of the terminology. Check out any of the videos randomly here or there that you might need, or if you want to go straight through the course, that's great too. Uh, hopefully this gives you a good start to know what we're talking about in the first few videos you check out.